let's face it, you're not here for me. I'm not here for me. <laughs> we know who we're here for. This is the bit where I get to be like the voiceover man on X Factor. His name's Peter Dixon, Fact Fans, because I'm going to wheel out some big facts in a dramatic voice, while it's going like this as a visual accompaniment. One started in 2006 at the age of 19, the other in 2009 at the age of 18. It was immediately noticeable they were both weird, funny, and hot. <laughs> when they combined forces, the world essentially exploded. Together, they have eight million subscribers on one hell of a lot of chemistry and hair. As Radio 1 presenters, they won a solely Golden Headphones Award. They had cameo roles in Disney's Big Hero 6, which is near as you can get to coming to be immortalized by God. Dan has touched Jennifer Lawrence's hand in a bonding high fives moment, whilst Phil has a superior educational qualification and is in the Guinness Book of Records as the fastest coin stacker in the world. See Seemingly uncontent with having conquered the world of internet and broadcast, they have moved like sexy conquering locusts into literature with their debut book, which has been number one both here and in America, in the young adult hardcover list, which sounds rude but is real and important. The book is The Amazing Book Is Not On Fire, and they are, as you well know, Dan Howell and Phil Lester, a.k.a. The Amazing Phil and Dan Is Not On Fire. Come join us on the stage. Step one, we didn't trip up the stairs. Yes, yes. Hello, everyone. Yes. Thanks for coming. Hi. Thanks Hi. for coming. No worries. Was that brief hiatus there when you were working out what order you should be in? Because yeah, you were, we were talking like, about do this you have before. an order. Yeah. 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 We met Anton Deck and they said, You need an order, guys. And we were like, What? Why do we need an order? Have you met Anton Deck? Yes. They are the most aspirational people. You're they are so, so organized. They? they knew what they were yeah. doing with their lives. If they, they well tell you something, you should do it. That's all I know. So. And did they explain in what order they stand and, and what logic they have chosen that and then how you the should logic. choose oh, your logic? I think it's just in the ant and deck order with your eyes. So if you see ant The name deck. you say first on the left, I yeah. think that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, that's the, the deep theory behind that one. And did you straight away agree with that? You knew yeah. which order you should stand in? We were yeah. just like, okay, uh, we'll do whatever you say. We almost fought to the death. No, let's, let's not lie. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Senpai <laughs> is what you'd call someone you respect <laughs> on the internet. So ant and deck were our senpais. They were. And we listened to them. Yeah. Where did you meet them? Were you at a showbiz party? Uh, we were actually... Well, yeah, because we, we go to parties <laughs> at all. Uh, no, we were at the Brits. We were at the Brit Awards. We were doing some presenting, so we snuck around backstage and we grabbed them for five minutes. Oh, and he... They were the proper presenters of the Brits, and we were like the weird internet ones at the back of the building, <laughs> so we briefly walked past them and we're like... <laughs> and that was basically it. Yeah. And who else were you most excited about meeting there at the Brits? You remember who else you bumped into? We saw Ed Sheeran again. Yeah, Ed he's Sheeran nice. again. He's cool. He's a nice person. So if you believe in Ed, good. Yeah. Yeah, he picked also, a nice guy. RJ Mitty from Breaking Bad was there. That was, was a like, surprise. Walter wasn't Junior. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to give him a big hug. <laughs> you did anyone... say hello first, otherwise he would have been very scared. Yeah. yeah. And was there anyone that you would have tried to avoid? Have you got any feuds yet? Is there anyone Not that yet. you have displeased? No, <laughs> no <laughs> feuds. Yes. Uh, I don't what think was the funny thing that happened? L Lily Allen emptied her clutch into your hands, didn't yeah, she? she did. I was, was like, what's in your... Yeah, like yeah. her clutch bag. Yeah. Is it more oh, right. a clutch? Yeah. Okay, like, it's like checking. a handbag, but okay. small. <laughs> <Okay>. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I asked what was in her bag, and she proceeded to empty it into my hands while I was trying to interview her. And I was like, oh, okay. That's if it was just stood there holding this, like, Chanel bag with, like, a little flask of yeah. vodka and some cigarettes, and we were like, okay. And Phil was like, oh, why are you making me hold things? Yeah. And then yeah. she asked me to repack it, and being the most clumsy person in the world, I was like, I'm going to do this wrong. Green alert. This is a suitcase. It's something that you should pay to see. So yeah. Your life as a professional packer is not starting now. No, no, not, not at all. It's safe to say. <laughs> So the format tonight is you are asking the questions. You've all, you've all had forms out there. You, you've done your questions. <laughs> Some of you have asked a lot of questions. Um, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get through them all in time. We're just going to put them out in random order. Okay. I'm going to get to sample all of your handwriting. So get ready. Um, when, I read out, uh, when I read out your question, I think it would be appropriate for you to scream and put your hand in the air. Uh, that <laughs> It's always good to have an excuse for screaming and putting your hands in the air. Yes. So we'll start off with one which is nice in general. Um, what inspires you to make videos? 
Whose was that? Oh, wow. Hand and a scream? Hand and a scream. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Give us your best blood scream. <laughs> and you do I'd be like, oh no, I don't want to make noise. Uh, wow. um, I get inspired by things in my everyday life that happen to me. Um, which I encounter quite a lot of strange situations, like I got attacked by a, a rabid squirrel. Uh, so there's a video that I got I attacked made. by a squirrel in the Florida. Um, <laughs> as you know. I was on BBC Breakfast. They said, "Where did the squirrel bite you?" And I said, "Florida." <laughs> Can't take that one back if it's no, like. No, Phil. They meant where on the body. But no, <laughs> love getting nibbled on the Florida. It's a yeah. good start to any day, isn't it? <laughs> what about you, Dan? <laughs> At first I was like, that's just funny because it makes no sense. Now the more I think about it, I'm like... What does that mean? Appendix. Um, (laughs) Is this going to get flagged? Can things get flagged? It's going to be buried right in the corner of the uh, Mm. iTunes store. Um, What inspires you to make videos? I just kind of like force my opinions upon people. So I'm like, what do I feel like... I want to hear people talking about that I just feel like, you you want to hear my opinion on this. Um, Yeah, that's basically what I do. And do you study in any way? Do you read all of the newspapers and decide to argue with people? Or do you watch all of the television and go, no, I go no, on, no, no? Yeah, I, I'd go on like 30-hour Wikipedia odysseys before some videos, which is bad. Do you ever do that? Oh, yeah. You go on Wikipedia yes, and yeah. it's like, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? And then it's 4 a.m. Yeah. And you're like, mm, why am I reading about oil rigs? Yeah. Um, <laughs> that random kind of like, button is dangerous. Because I'm like, I don't want to give an opinion on the internet without being mildly yeah. educated. Because as we all know, the internet will destroy you. <laughs> for they will. Th- you see, like, uh, you, made, like, you made it like a type even if the argument was right, destruction. So you really, and I make so many typos anyway, so there's no point at all. I think yeah. they know, seriously, my Twitter's just a train wreck, but I try. Can you say now at the age you're at whether you think you've learned more from your education or from the internet? I think definitely from the internet. From the internet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like an entire year's worth of school yeah. is just like one search term away, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I did post-production at university, so that helped me, like, animate Jennifer Lawrence's face across a screen and things you like that. You actually did something relevant. I did something Do relevant. You know how rare that is for <laughs> um, yeah. But apart from that, I think I learned far more from the internet. And just my life experiences as well, like, making videos about university or my school life or things that I've done, I think have helped a lot more of my videos than my education. What was that? I'm not saying a bottle just fall from the sky. There we go, put that there. there I'm not go. saying that my law degree was completely useless, <laughs> yeah. but it has been mostly completely <laughs> useless so far. I'll let you guys know. Yeah. And you've spoken about the danger of the internet before now and how the internet can become a nasty place. Do you think that we should have someone in charge of the internet? Like a mum or a dad of the internet a, a who gets the to internet. tell off bad people and go, that was wrong? I think the internet is too powerful to be tamed by anyone. It has yeah. to, you know, it's quite important for the internet to be a completely free and open place there on the internet. But I think that there's a lot of websites that probably don't do enough to protect people from being harassed if they don't want to be just because there's so many things where it's like you block someone and like you can still see them on their timeline and stuff i don't think there should be any all-powerful force on the internet but if somebody has like built a community then they have a responsibility to try and like build all the features as possible for people to completely control how they're interacted with well you started the hashtag nicer internet yeah the nicer internet thing we did with radio one yeah that was good that was trying to tell people to be a bit nicer online. lots of wisdom packed into there yeah i'm gonna hear what you're saying that the internet is too big to be controlled by one or two people but if you do do you imagine it being controlled by Sir Ian McKellen, who plays Gandalf, and then Beyonce? Suddenly, yes. I would that not be quite a good place to be? I think that Gandalf and Beyonce would yeah. definitely improve the internet yeah. in a big way. And Beyonce's got time. I mean, Beyonce she's already controls course. the internet, you know, just with her pop culture influence. Yeah. She's out there. <laughs> So here we go. Um, uh, so the book. We're going to speak of the book now. Um, the book. Uh, there's two questions here from Kira. Can, can we can we have a hand on a scream? Kira, do a scream, or you can do a yo if you're not a screamer. That's good. That was, that was a strong good. noise. Thank you. I nice. felt the enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. That was dignified. Um, your first question is: uh, What's your favourite page written by the other person? Ooh, the hand. I the mean, hand. come on, guys. I mean, we, we've all been there, right? That was. Was yeah. that just one page as well? That, that was two pages. We challenged each other to write fan fictions in our, in our own style. Yes. There are a lot of good ideas in the book. <laughs> and I just thought I'd let my creativity flow as much as possible. So I ended up with a fan fiction about a mutant hand growing out of my chest. Um, which Don't spoil the ending. I won't spoil the there ending. There is a twist. There is a yeah. twist Don't ending. See coming in like the laws of our universe. Yeah. So yeah, that was really fun to write. That was inspired. Because uh, we didn't like tell each other or help each other with the ideas. With that one, we were kind of like... 
we're going to do fan fictions. Yeah. We're not going to talk about it. You just go write yours. I'll just go write mine. And then we'll meet in the middle and just see what the other person made. And I was like, okay, Phil, here's my one about like angsty vampires. <laughs> and then I was like, what's yours, Phil? And I was like, okay. Okay. <laughs> wow. I mean, Thanks, Phil. You shouldn't lasso your creativity. You should just let it flow out of true, your head. True, true. It was very, very inspirational. Yeah, good. Thank, thank you. you. Is there anyone here who's not read the book yet? Would we be spoiling it? Has everyone read yeah, the book? Good, yeah. So thank you. you. Know what There's lasers in this story. pointed at you. It's, 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 <laughs> It is quite the most terrific ending to a story I've ever... <laughs> it's quite unexpected. Graphic imagery. I was actually hoping for a movie deal out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> just so you could meet Harry, though. Yeah, I'm just that's why. sign Harry Styles up. Harry birthed through your own abdomen. He did. <laughs> there we go. Spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I mean, there's like, don't lasso your creativity, and then there's whatever that is. That's like, bye, you're out of the atmosphere. Yeah. Well, this question kind of follows on after that one. Were there any ideas that you scrapped... Or wanted to include but didn't. I mean, I, I'm thinking that you've already included everything you thought I, of, yeah, given I, that that happened. Well, given that that is in the book, I think everything was included that we wanted to be. But we did have about 7,000 pages worth of ideas that we had to, like, whittle down yeah. into our favourite ones. Definitely. We were kind of... We got to a point where we had, like, 30% too many ideas. Yeah. And then we were like, let's fit them all in the book. And then they were like, uh, no, because there's only this many pages. And we went, let's add 80 pages. And they said, you can't just say that. And we're like, okay. So then we had, like, a month yeah. of just, like slowly setting fire to all these ideas we had. I let go slowly, didn't That's I, That's what Phil? they said. They said it was like murdering your pets. Because <laughs> Phil was yeah. like, come on, Dan, just, just pick five. And I was like, like you know what? I'll start slowly. Here's one you can ditch. And they're like, Dan, you need to get rid of 35. And I was like, mm. yeah. Uh, yeah. It took about a month for me to let go of 35 ideas. We did actually end up with a lot more content in the book than we originally planned out to Definitely. do as well. it's packed. We got rid of quite a few more photos than words. There's more words than we expected to have, yeah, yeah. which is nice. And do you feel the split is fair? Are either of you sort of annoyed that the other one got one more page than the other, or is it completely did we fair? Do that? I, 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 think it, I think it's actually Your around 50 50. Turned it? up a, a few pages. I yeah. think Phil's, like, I think the split of ideas or chat is even but mm. I think that a couple of Phil's things like the chat logs we were like for this to be even it needs to be just two pages but yeah. actually we really want this to take like, out, like, like more because it's amazing so yeah. I have to keep going <laughs> and who's more likely to be the one that goes no we can't put that in there who's the strict one who's Ooh. the who's the no that will not happen <laughs> I'm like the Phil that makes no sense that can't go in the book and <laughs> Phil's like the Dan it won't get printed in America if you say that and I'm yeah. like okay you're probably yeah. right yeah, I think Dan pushes too many limits I'm like Dan no we can't we can't have that in the book. Maybe not. <laughs> it, it's quite important. We're like two ends of the spectrum yeah. that without the other person meeting halfway in the middle, just it just wouldn't exist. Yeah. Like a beautiful man rainbow. Uh, yes. 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 Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picturing things and they're all, they're all good and bad at the same time. Yes. Yeah. The best things are good and bad at the same time. Yes. Uh, next question. A thoughtful question. All right. Okay. What is the general message? Which I thought was what was the general massage, which would have been a the general thing massage. Entirely. What is the general but, massage? <laughs> but what is the general message you're trying to convey through the book? Ooh, I think we were just trying to emulate everything that is the world of Dan and Phil into something. So if the world gets destroyed by a meteor, then that's something that could be left in the rubble like a memory of our, our lives. That is what we were thinking, yeah. because we were just pondering about Dan and Phil and how the whole thing and the YouTube was all a big accident, because you know, all the people that are YouTubers now, it was a complete accident. Nobody yeah. planned anything. Nobody knew that was going to happen. And yet, this kind of like amazing world of Dan and Phil kind of did get created. All the experiences that we've had, all the things that we've done over the years, all the videos that we've made, and all of the things yeah. that we've done with the guys that have supported us over the few years. And we were just thinking literally in that kind of a meteor could come and destroy us and this book's left it's like we felt like we needed to do something to kind of preserve dan and phil in something forever so that yeah. in the event of a catastrophic meteor or ian mccullen comes and like just deletes the internet forever dan and phil and everything we did and made and you know what these guys were a part of is kind of preserved in a big memory box for us all yeah, yeah. i think i also wanted people to come away and just think don't be afraid of being a little bit weird if you are, just embrace it. Because if, if there's any message that. of Dan and Phil, yeah. that's it. You know what I mean? It's like, you might have no friends or social life or, you know, on any of the, the top 10 things that you think you have to do in school to be cool, if you tick none of those boxes, that's fine. Yeah. There are people out there that will accept you for 
Yeah. Just like being on a completely different piece of paper. <laughs> the, there is a recurring theme of the apocalypse and doom and the end of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is. Have you made any preparations for that? Do you have apocalypse cupboards? Have you worked out where you'll go in the event of a nuclear strike? Like, how, how far <laughs> ahead are you thinking? How useful would you be in an apocalypse yeah. scenario? I would, be, I would be terrible. If the zombies started invading, I'd probably be the first person to die. Uh, I've learned that you shouldn't go to a shopping mall because there's too many exits. So Good then the idea. zombies can get in. Yeah. Get in, yeah. all right. Mm. So yeah. where would you go then? Where's the safest place? I'd probably just go to the top of a really tall skyscraper. You know, like a penthouse, someone's got a pool, they've gone out of town. Steal that, raid their fridge, and go swimming. You've got a plan. You're thinking ahead. Yeah, yeah I'm thinking good. ahead. Yeah. I might have a helicopter on the roof as well. <laughs> and yet the person who's less, more worried about the apocalypse appears not to have a plan. Yeah, like, I mean, I constantly just think about, like, doom and the inevitability <laughs> of death coming from, like, all angles. So, like, a, a, a constant part of me is always dwelling on different yeah. apocalypse scenarios, I think. But... Um, in the event of something like that, I'll probably just be in my apartment. Yeah. I've, we've got enough microwave popcorn to last for like at least a decade. <laughs> but, but that, that was part of the book. It's called Going Deep. And what we did basically is we just chose the topic and then we talked about it, recorded our conversations, and then we wrote them down in the book, like what we were thinking about robots or the apocalypse. You know, the, yeah. the real, the real the questions. Real, the real that we questions. All need to ponder, yeah. Definitely. I'm saying the word legacy here. That's that's the start of the legacy. Yes. Yeah. The book. That is legacy. Um, and um, we've got, um, what inspired you to write your life into a book? That's from Gabby. Where's Gabby? Can we have a... We have a hey. Hi, Gabby. Hi. <laughs> that was a good comment. That was good, thank word. you. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Energised now. That's a double yoker. <laughs> um, I thought it could help other people out, like talking about my university life and starting a university flat with 10 people and what all the trials of that. I thought anyone that's starting university could read that and think, wow, oh, okay, he got through that in the end. That was great. Yeah, um, it, it was a funny yeah. one because, like, obviously, the amazing book is not on fire. Isn't really an autobiography. Like, it's really mainly all the other bits of the book that are just yeah. about kind of like the things that me and Phil have done and created. But then we thought, should we include some parts of it? Would it be weird to like do certain bits and mm -hmm. certain not bits? And then we thought that, like Phil said, it would be really good to share like certain pockets that different kind of. Uh, groups of our audience might be able to really relate to different chunks, but then also yeah. it'd be really hilarious to pick specific parts of us growing up before we met as part of like the before YouTube section of Dan before and Phil YouTube. and like, compare how our experiences went, which I think is perfectly summed up by that one page where it's my resignate, uh, was it resigning from law school <laughs> and then like <laughs> Phil proudly holding his diploma <laughs> on the other page. I'm like, literally that double page, my grandma was like, oh. 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 <laughs> oh. There we that's go. Nice. So I'm like, yeah, that's my life uh, right there there's also the amazing information in there that had you been girls that dan you would have been called yazi or yazi yeah yeah i was like thanks mom yazi <laughs> howell it's yeah. a beautiful name yeah and, and you would have been fiona fiona lester yeah. fiona yeah. lester yeah. i like that i think fiona marries with lester slightly more than yazi does with howell i'm just going to put that out there yeah. I don't know about you. <laughs> Have you often wondered, I mean, I mean, first of all, do you like those names? Were you girls? Would you be happy? Do you feel I, you are a Fiona? Are you a Yazi? I would be is totally happy with the name Fiona if it's I was It's quite a pretty female. name, isn't it, Fiona? I yeah. think I'd really hate my mum for a while, but then eventually I'd be like, I like being a special snowflake. Yes, Yazi, <laughs> weird name. <laughs> and are you not inclined to put an appeal out to find out if there is a Fiona or a Yazi out there with a your Yazi Yazi So you can yeah. meet them, your weird doppelganger girl selves. I think they could be out there somewhere. Yeah. I'll post that on Facebook later. I mean, Yazi's going to be yeah. difficult. Yeah. But Fiona, that's possible. Maybe. I bet there's at least 10 people from my audience that are role-playing as Yazzie Howell, the gender-bended <laughs> version of Dan in this universe right now. <laughs> um, here we go. Now, another question from the audience. Um, while you were writing the book, did you experience any creative block? And if so, how did you overcome it? That's from Martha. Where's Martha? Hey, Martha. Hello. Hey. Uh, um, <laughs> I think when wow. you're creating anything there'll always be a time when your mind's like, ah, I can't handle this anymore. I've, I've done too much of it or something. So yeah, there were some blocks. I think especially when we were trying to like work out the order of the pages or how it's all going to fit together. Oh my God, that yeah. took a long time. Um, but to get over that, I just went for a walk outside, like that strange place that I never go. Uh, <laughs> or I'd a good one is to like watch something that inspires you that someone else has made, like something really creative, like a movie or a TV show or something yeah, like that. Yeah, but honestly, it's like getting excited about being creative is a good way to get over that so if you're like oh no i've just been doing this then you know we watch other youtubers videos or watch a show that we like or read a book that we like and then we're like yeah. oh now i know why i was excited to do this in the first place and suddenly you want to go back and you have loads of energy unless you watch game of thrones then you end up on the doom <laughs> then, pages yeah, yeah. Right. then we get to the apocalypse because you've just been dwelling on the death yeah, yeah. 
And did you do any... Because if there's a montage in a film of people working on a creative process, when they do the montage, they do the following things. Pacing up and down. Did you yeah. do that? Did a, did a bit of pacing. I do so much pacing. Yeah, you do. My neighbours must hate me. I'm a 4am pacer. When I really... When I'm, when I'm, like, deep in a Wikipedia odyssey, <laughs> or, like, you know, I'm just thinking about something, then I pace... I get up and I sign it because everyone here knows that I talk to myself. Yeah. It's weird, but it just happens. It's very when, weird. When I'm having internal thoughts, my mouth moves at the same time and also produces the noise, so I am basically talking to myself. I thought you were possessed sometimes. <laughs> I'm just like, you just see him like walking with his head down. Going, what was it like when you like, first noticed I, like, I talked to myself? What are you doing? You're like, this Dan guy is pretty cool, but I think he's going to kill me. You're like, maybe I shouldn't ask. I'm just going to back away slowly. <laughs> A lot of pacing. Yeah, so that was in the montage. Okay, so pacing, montage. yes. Um, compulsive eating. Um, yeah. Yeah, just um, endlessly compulsively comfort eating. Marshmallows, Haribo. It was a bad couple months, right? Endless yeah. burk. I was just kind yeah. of like, mm, I don't know what to think, so I'm going to replace my thinking with pizza uh, was a kind of the solution to every problem. We went through a bit where we were like, let's try every type of flavoured popcorn and that will help with the book. <laughs> so that was, that I'll, was actually I'll, something we did. I'll write a hundred words and I'll get to try that with popcorn. By the way, berry and lemon popcorn. Horrible. It's not good. A mistake. Travis it's a mistake. nature. Science went too far. Yeah. Berry popcorn. It was horrifying. Yeah. I've never have, felt more betrayed. Have you seen that popcorn that they have in, I think when I went to Philadelphia, that is cheese and caramel? Cheese and caramel. And as soon as you come wow. out of the airport, cheese and caramel popcorn. They're no. like, it's our thing. You're That's... like, I don't want it to be your I, thing. I can't I do think cheese. I'm up for that. I don't you're know. up for that? Phil's severely cheese phobic. Yes, yeah, so would not. So, um, that would that's going to be a yeah. strong no for that's Phil. That's a strong yeah. no from me. <laughs> okay, and thirdly, uh, the other thing they do in montages where people are creatively blocked is a weird thing where they sit on the floor and bounce a ball against the wall and catch it over and over again. Did you do that? I've never understood that. I don't have any coordination, so I'd probably just bounce it and it'd smack me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> One bang. There we go. That's what I get for trying that. For me, it's just lying face down on the floor, isn't it? Yeah. Existential crisis yeah, mode. I did, did that a few times. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what we've got here. Um, Emma from London. Emma, where are you? Do you want to give a little... Hi, Emma. Hi. Um, the Vegas section of the book sounded intense. Did you suffer any long-term physical injuries? Hashtag troll smiley face. <laughs> I mean, there were lots of... I mean, like, who decided that Phil could attempt so many dangerous things? I know. Like, running and jumping. Tra I, tracking through the desert for days, that was hard. And I'd dangerous, had no it? helicopter training, and the fact that I just got in that helicopter and went it, for it. It was brave, but it was necessary. It was. I mean, really, just running through a gunfight isn't a safe thing to do, but we had to do it because we were in the situation. And some people don't believe this happened, but we've given photographic like, like, evidence honestly, in the like, book. <laughs> I mean, we what lost, more do you we need? lost the videos, but we took photos. We literally we showed the entire story from front to back with photos, <laughs> and still people are like... I don't think you saw aliens. It's like I literally took a picture of a flying saucer. So, well, what you, so there you go. You what more do you need? If it's on the internet, it's real. We know this to be a fact. Uh, where are we going? Um, oh, no, that's the same question again. Why are we here? Um, I don't know what this is because it's a technical term. I'm uh, okay. 147 years old, but it says... Are you going to make an ASMR channel? What's that? Oh, that, that that's the thing that I, I've only recently discovered. No, it's not rude. Have I just said a bad it's, thing? It sounds like it's like, uh-oh, no, but it's fine. If it's I ever find my ASMR like channel, I'll be scared. Sensual talking that it, people it, it, find, it, like, meditative. Yeah. Sensual talking. Yeah. Some people have, like, really, I was going to say erotic. That's not the no, word. it's not erotic. Kind of <laughs> sensual voices that some people find, like, really calming. Or, like, if it's, like, really, whis like, if you go, hello. Whispering, it can make people's scalp tingle. It's so, a thing. So some people Tingly do like scalp. they do like pretend videos where you're getting a haircut from this person with a lovely voice, and it's kind of like you just put it yeah. on and you're like, ah, but yes, <laughs> yes, I'm imagining this. Um, and we uploaded a trailer for our audiobook yesterday, yes, which was a disaster. Um, and then now people are asking us if we're going to do that yeah. full time. Clearly not a good idea. But no. the, the, thing, the thing we did with the trailer, it was a 3D audio trailer. So it's called binaural, binaural technology. technology. That's a word for yeah. you right there. Uh, we did it with a company called Something Else. And basically there's a mannequin's head in the middle of a room. And you, it's act, very out, creepy. you act out whatever you're doing around the mannequin's head. And then if you're listening with your eyes closed and headphones, you can hear us behind you, in front of you, or drying your and, hair. And which pe is people like that. They That's like the, it. They li it's yes. kind yeah. of, well, I mean, like, I'm, I'm, it was right down the middle between this is really cool and amazing slash oh. what are you doing like, get Why off are you my making neck these noises oh. so we wanted it to be quite funny as well yeah. and, and what are your do you do special voices for this can you do the special voices now what are the oh, special what voices like, <laughs> what, what we're we like sorry if i get too close to your ears <laughs> i don't know is it creepy when i'm behind your neck <laughs> i hope you don't like the mouth noises <laughs> <laughs> and that's not even with headphones it's just generally horrifying isn't it yeah, yeah. 
I'm um, so sorry. <laughs> we've got one from Nicole here. Um, how does it feel to know that so many people love and appreciate your book? Oh, Where's Nicole? Nicole. Nicole, you ask a lovely question. Thanks, Nicole. Oh. Oh. All flattered now. Good. No, it... It makes me feel really nice that people have read the book and they appreciate it. But my favorite thing is actually people who have made friends through watching our videos or through reading the book or anything like that. That's the nicest so, thing uh, you can hear, isn't yeah. it? One of, one of them. And so if you go to a meetup and they're like, I've actually made my best friend through watching when, your when videos. We're, when we're on tour, yeah. when we meet people, when we do meet and greets, they're kind of like, I am here with my three best friends who are all from different you know, ends of the country and yeah. we met because we just <laughs> kind of talked about your videos on Tumblr. We're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start dribbling on you. Um, yeah. Yeah. So if, if there's ever a Phil and Dan wedding from people having met through, you know, yeah. through you, would you attend them all? We have to attend wedding. that yeah, wedding. Yeah, because we're kind yeah. of like, we are your internet fathers. Yes. You yeah. have our blessing. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then would you insist that their children would A, have to Ob be twins obviously, and B, be called yes. Phil and Dan? Yes, yes. obviously, yeah. And or if it was one child, child, just called Phil and Dan, all one word. Phil just and that Dan. Thing. Phil and Dan. Or, or the Dill. Or Dill. Yeah. Or yeah. Dill. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we need a girl version of Dill, don't we? That's yeah. We should think about that. A girl yeah. version of yeah. Dill? We'll get thinking about that. Yeah. But no, it's good. I mean, honestly, the reason we... Um, made the whole book in the first place is obviously to kind of, you know, to preserve Dan and Phil and to do something to celebrate these guys. So the fact that we made, you know, we made the book for these guys, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it was, it was fun for us and it was good for us and we enjoyed everything about making a book, but really the reason we made this Dan and Phil book was for the people that have yeah. watched and supported our videos over the years. So for them to be like, I really like this, I'm really happy, you know, that's good. Because <laughs> if they went, you made it for us, it was a bit of a flop. We'd yeah. like, okay, oh. we would try. <laughs> that's good. Well, number one, baby, it's not a flop. It's hurrah. Yeah. Hurrah for being number one. Hurrah for being number one. Thanks. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. Um, what were the books that you loved when you were sort of kids, teenagers? What were the ones that got you through? Did you have authors or books that you were just like, this is my Bible, this is keeping me sane? <laughs> I was a strange horror fiend. Yeah. So I read all of the Stephen King books. His short stories. Explains a lot. It, it probably it? explains yeah. a lot. I read his short stories loads of times. I read The Shining which messed me up as a child. Yes, yeah. <laughs> as a child. Uh, yeah, so I, I read a lot. I read the, um, the Northern Lights trilogy. I really like that. Quite they're inspiring. Amazing. They're amazing. Yeah. Yes. I was in yeah. quite the cool position where I was the same age as Harry Potter in the books, which oh, was wow. like that golden moment. So literally from Philosopher's Stone to Deathly Hallows, like I was reading it with my mum when I was about to go to secondary school with Philosopher's Stone. And then I was literally sat in a park reading Deathly Hallows with my teenage friends oh. as we were about to like finish school. So I had like the absolute like max emotional impact Hogwarts experience going through all of that, which was good. It's like completely living vicariously through <laughs> the Wizarding World, and then the emotionally harrowing crater that it left, left all behind of us when it ended. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever dress up as him? But the parties, yeah, like at Halloween? least twice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I'm called Daniel. <laughs> all right, all right. And did you make good Potter? Did you did you look at yourself and go, I am good Potter? Do you think I, I, I think I drew like on my forehead with a red biro, so I think the production <laughs> budget could have been improved. Just by, looking I, at yourself in the I mirror. I cared and I tried. You're a wizard, Dan. That's what you're saying to yourself. <laughs> yes, in the yeah. hungry voice. <laughs> in the hungry voice. <laughs> I guess a lot of people will be buying the book or getting the book for Christmas. Um, uh, what are your plans for Christmas? Looking ahead, what are you guys going to be doing? What's your Christmas plan? Hibernating. Yes. Going to hibernate. In the both food and sleep sense. Yeah. I, I plan to just, like, consume extreme amounts of food and then sleep for a month. I think that's my December plan. I'm planning on watching all of the Star Wars movies. Yeah. Because yes, yeah, that needs I've to watched happen, them in ages and I'm going to go watch the new one with my family, I think. In what order are you going to watch Star Wars in and in what order do you eat your Christmas dinner? Two oh, very important questions. Let's not get those mixed up. Are yes. you going to watch the Jar Jar films or are you just going to go like, mm, yeah. with the original no, I think I'm just going to watch the original ones and then the new ones because that's the... The, well, the new... new what, oh, no, that's confusing. The original Where trilogy, then the one that's coming out yes. now. Yes. Yes. I Just can pretend. skip the Jar Jar universe because I've seen that quite recently. So yeah. oh, I'm right. 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 Okay, you're yeah. that. And what order are you going to eat yeah, your Christmas approach, dinner? Approach the dinner? I'm someone that likes to combine every aspect of the plate at once for like the maximum food experience. Do you guys do this? Yeah. Some yeah. people are like, I'll eat this, then I'll eat the Brussels sprouts, then I'll eat the stuffing, then I'll do this. Whereas I'm kind of like, no, I need, it's, it's designed to be eaten as a complete package. Therefore, I will cut a tiny bit of everything, <laughs> put it all on my fork and be like, this is it. This is the moment. I, I've scientifically created the optimum fork. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Do that about 20 times. I'm learning a lot about you, Dan. Um, yeah, I'm one of those people that forces everyone to play board games. I'm like, no, we're not leaving the table until this Monopoly game is over. I don't care if it's four in the morning. 
I had a 24 hour game of Monopoly once. It was Did a you? nightmare. It's a truly horrific game. Really? Wow. It can ruin friendships. How can it go on for 24 hours with people just falling asleep in the middle of it? <laughs> really? Was that, was that it continuous? It never ends, yeah. it? Yeah. I threw a hotel at my brother once. I get quite uh, aggressive. Wow. Yeah. 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 It's one of those boats men. that sounds less impressive when you know it's a Monopoly hotel. You know it's a Monopoly hotel. It's actual hotel. building. It was actually a whole Marriott just to try and restrain my superpowers. Have you seen that website that tells you how you can win Monopoly really easily and ruins it for you? No. It's really easy. Do you want me to tell you? Don't tell me. But then you would win forever. But then there's no magic of the dice. Phil's in it for the for the forced bonding around the dining table more than the winning. I'm more in it for that. For yeah. the enforced property development of speculation. <laughs> yes, yes. Microcosm of 21st century consumerism. Yay. Monopoly. Yay. Christmas. Um, and then obviously after Christmas, New Year. Do you then go out and enlarge it for New Year? Do you have plans for the NYE? <laughs> <laughs> me and Phil never have plans uh, no, for New Year. So actually. Like, everyone's like, you're going to a party. We're like, mm. Last year, <laughs> Sherlock special and dominoes. <laughs> Last year, I actually made the weakest link and I created it on our door. I was Anne Robinson. I got when, all when of our Phil friends. says he's all about the force. No, that, that's, like, that's it. You don't understand. He I made mean, a weakest link game and then forced everybody to play yeah. it whilst assuming <laughs> the characteristics of Anne Robinson. <laughs> See, who needs to go to a nightclub when you've got real life weakest link? Seriously, at home? guys, outside is overrated. Yeah. yeah. In a way, I see what you mean there. Yes. Thank you. You were being quite strict, That's, though. You weren't tolerating any banter among the people. You were no. like, Dan, this is not funny. What do you call that haircut? Oh, Phil. <laughs> God. I, I was actually on the me. weakest link at one point in my life. So yes. I had experience there. So I thought I'd uh, really those emotions. You were just therapy working yeah. out the kind of bullying from Anne. Yeah. I was. How did you do on the real weakest link? And how did you do on, on, on the, the full weakest, weakest link? link. Did you win? No, PJ won the weakest link. PJ won. <laughs> a uh, friend who wins everything. He does. He's very competitive. Yeah. yeah. I actually came second in the weakest link, got hey. to the final, and then messed up a question about llamas, of all things. It was, yeah. like, if you watch it, it's in, it's incredible, because Phil did really well this yeah. entire... And, like, the weakest link is hard, and it's intense. It's hard. You know? It's so it's, scary. It's up against this, like, like a nightmare. lady in her 40s that was wise and, like, knew so many things about culture and the world, and it was all like, <laughs> yeah. come on, Phil, you're yeah. not going to do this. But he was doing it, and then, can I say the question? Go on, It's really funny, and then you can say the answer. They were right. like, what animal that is known for its fur have the first two letters are the same? Obviously, llama. llama. Yeah, ob I, I heard. Obviously. I heard no two letters are the same. So I said, which could have been oh. sheep, ostrich. It could have been literally any fur-based animal. I said <laughs> gnu. What? What? I don't know. I don't like, know. Literally. Let's move on. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I hope for many weeks afterwards you just went to went gnu yeah, just I, in the I, middle of a conversation. Winning the weakest link could have been like the biggest moment of your entire life, and you threw it away with like literally the worst answer ever. Yeah. Bad times. Mm, times. So you're on tour at the moment. Finishes this Sunday. Oh finishes this God. Sunday. Yes. Yeah, it's been five weeks of being on tour now. How has that happened? I don't know. Wow. Uh, yeah, we've been doing a stage show, which is The Amazing Tour is Not on Fire. Yeah, yeah. Yes. good name there. Yeah. Love I it. have seen it. It is amazing. Say, oh, it's it's, it's extraordinary. The atmosphere outside is proper Beatlemania. Just like proper <laughs> screaming and just so many cat faces. Lo it's just very, Lots of very whiskers. Yes. Good. Yeah, and we've been planning it for so long, haven't we? How long have we been working on it now? For like the whole year. Yeah. It's crazy because the whole year we were kind of thinking, we're going on tour this autumn. Everybody's bought tickets and we were kind of like, we need to like decide what we're doing soon. And it's one of yeah. those things where you've had the ideas for years. You yeah. know, very like vague, I'm sure you've had this, like yeah. about projects you might do in the future. You have the very vague ideas, but then there comes the time when you actually have to really specifically plan what it is. It's happening. Yeah. You have to yeah. do and it, we yes. Like, oh my God. Without spoiling the show, we had a lot of big, exciting ideas for things that people definitely wouldn't have expected. And yeah. we were like, that's a fun idea. But then the time came and we were like, we have to commit to this idea now. Yeah. And can we even do these things? And it's perilous. You injure there yourself is peril. a couple times. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've burnt myself. I've cut my hand open. I mean, I real over, peril on stage. I sprained my ankle once, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's a roller coaster. Yeah. Also, just like driving up and down the country. I've seen Nottingham. I've seen Glasgow. I've seen... It's quite beautiful, the yeah, UK countryside, isn't it, actually? I mean, yeah. the, I think Glasgow back was the best journey. What are the mountains in Scotland? The, the Scottish the mountains. Scot the Scottish Scot mountains. Those ones, yeah. very yeah. scenic. Yeah. 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 I'm not saying that driving to Basingstoke was less scenic. <laughs> we still appreciated it, you know. <laughs> we did. It's good. 
It's a really beautiful show. It makes you feel very, very happy to watch oh, it. It's just yeah, a really happy great. place. Yeah, like, I can you. imagine anybody watching it would be cured of many ailments. It's oh, a beautiful so, thing. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like lovely heart medicine. I'm oh. very, very happy watching it. Just to be clear, it. we're not faith healers. but yes. the <laughs> <laughs> That's the next Don't one. Don't rule it out now. I won't rule it out. 2017, yeah, guys. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we wanted people to come away with a feeling of like that they in you know those same messages they yeah. were talking about with the book um we really wanted to kind of give everybody the the dan and phil feeling and like somehow encapsulate everything dan and phil into one show again so we yeah. don't we don't aim high phil do we? <laughs> like, let's define our existences in a stage show i've learned things as well like stage left and stage right yes confusing yeah and not what you think it's like steering a boat isn't it it is yeah. like steering a boat and, and phil can't do left and right anyway so that was like so if you see me wander off that proud. way and then the other way on stage that's what's going on and also the palladium's on a, a on a slant as well yeah we're the ending rake. the show with the, the rake. palladium which is crazy yeah. which is amazing i mean we've been to a right few venues we went to a, a hockey arena in plymouth didn't yeah. we <laughs> that was it's it's really fun, honestly, like playing yeah. to loads of different crowds and loads of different spaces. And then you go to like the big fancy theatres and all of a sudden it's like, <gasps> all of a sudden. Well, what was great business. about you doing it at the Palladium is it's where Cats is usually on. So everyone had the whiskers outside and then the cat's eyes it from was, the logo were still cats. all over the building. It was, it was like, it's like you themed it and spent a lot of money yeah. doing it. And yeah. the funniest thing is the cat's set, which kind of looks like an alleyway that cats would loiter in, yeah. takes up loads of the room, but we couldn't remove it just for the thing. So we've kind of like draped over the cat's set. draped over the set. <laughs> 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 like peep behind it you can like see a massive Toblerone or something in the background tell you what the dressing room in the Palladium is the fanciest place in the entire world really? yeah. it's, Im it's impressive and not all of them have been like especially old theatres they're yeah. kind of like mm, this smells like a basement but, but they're, they're apparently they're redoing the building and we figured out it's because Nicole Scherzinger was in Cats. I was say, Still like, yeah, oh my God, yeah. if we're redoing the building. We got her we dressing need to room. Start with Nicole's dressing room. We got it's, there. It's got like an orchid and a vase. We were like, what, what is, is this? this? So it's like, this is the Nicole experience, yeah. Phil. Also, a bit of leftover, they had some soy sauce and truffles. That's, That's right. obviously yeah. what she yeah. asked for. Yeah. Nicole's soy sauce and Just truffles. Just like pour soy sauce all over the truffles. Whereas <laughs> our rider that we don't have is like some squares. Solomon vinegar squares, yeah. a can of Coke. Did you have a pre-stage ritual? What would you do to hype each other up? I mean, like Madonna obviously goes into a huddle and prays. Uh, kind <laughs> I think of what would you... Just like silently browse Tumblr for a while yeah, and like focus your mind. Out the internet. <laughs> we, um, we have a playlist that we play before every show, which we curated ourselves. Okay, we're, yeah. we're very proud of the playlist. We were like, we need to like sum up like the last five years of musical references and things that people will like. And we can hear it when we turn the speakers on. And yeah. every every single show, you can hear the crowd singing the words to every song. And that's nice. So we don't need to do anything to get ourselves cut like, up for the show, other than like it. listening to these guys singing the like rendition of the Circle of Life. Circle <laughs> yeah. of Life, that does it for me. Spoiler, that is in the playlist. Yeah. And yeah. It's uh, breaking Free from High School Musical as well. Laura Vance and the Emma Bright. I got quite yeah. tearful for that one, to you be honest. Teary. I had, yeah, oh. that, I love that song. Good singers, our audience. Yeah. 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 They well done, guys. They sang, they did well. Um, so, okay, another question from the audience. Um, yeah, what was the funniest moment on the tour bus then? What, I mean, oh. did you have a tour bus? Or were you oh, just kind it's of, it's um, kind of like a tour van. Yeah. Like, <laughs> England isn't really big enough to warrant a tour bus. It's a it's tour like, car. Tour yeah, car. Yeah. It, was, it was a tour car. I mean, Phil cannot control the crumbs of anything that he eats. So, like, Phil versus a pastry first in the morning is like, <laughs> put up the shields. It's like a tidal wave of and crumbs. Like, literally, yeah. it's like, the end, you're going to look with, like, pastry flakes in your hair. And it's like, what happened? Phil versus croissants. I think, I think that the main drama has been my travel sickness. So Dan just sat there on a laptop, and I'm, I'm like just emailing like staring out the videos. window, like I can't look at anything. Don't even talk to me. But I've, I've got used to it. You survived without projectile vomiting on me in the car, which is good. And yeah. which travel sickness remedies have you tried? Have you done the little bracelety thing? Yeah, they freak me out though. They you press, one of those. Yeah, yeah, it presses into your vein, which makes your hand really cold, which then distracts your brain because your hand is cold and doesn't make you sick. But that's far more traumatizing yeah. than just. Being, so Phil tried it, and he was like, Why oh, I don't my hand like cold? it. I just want to feel queasy. Oh. So then that was. That. Yeah, so I tried that, and then just not going on a laptop has really helped. That's that's the cure. Yeah. Sometimes feels just like check that there isn't a typo down. I can't look at the phone anymore, yeah. and I'm like, okay. Yeah, it's and hard also, to why are you asking me to check your typos? I'm just going <laughs> to hand that back to you. <laughs> and okay, so your most annoying thing is your constant nausea. Yes. Um, what's the most annoying thing? What, oh, what's the most annoying thing about Dan? Yeah. Uh, is it that I don't get motion sick and yeah, I'm probably. sat there like enjoying browsing for an hour. So you have the ability to do that. I have I the ability to enjoy life in a moving vehicle. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that actually. I can imagine that must be pretty traumatic. Well, sometimes I'll just I'll be like starting a conversation. I will look over and Dan's just asleep. And I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> talk to me. Talk about this interesting thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, here we go. We've got another one from the audience here. Um, can you do an impression of your fan meme? Who or your fave meme. Oh, your fave meme. I thought it was a fan, fan meme. meme. Like, <laughs> what is that? All the fans in one go? I don't know. Why not? Because there's, there's a lot of memes out there. Yeah. yeah. That was the latest one. There was one recently. There was a photo of us where I'm leaning on Phil's shoulders. Oh, yeah. And the, the joke there was to edit out Phil and, just, and replace. just replace me leaning on shoulders onto various celebrities. It's so funny. because like I'm I saw like, an Obama I just, one. I just accept that like my life is a joke. Like I'm just a piece of meat for the internet. <laughs> do like whatever they want with it's like it's fine so I'm just like scrolling through Tumblr just like oh god well, half of these are offensive my favourite one was, was you on Obama and you on some bacon I saw as well I didn't see the bacon bacon was a good one I saw one. me and Nick Jonas that fit very well actually yeah clearly meant to be yeah that's good yeah. Um, generally this <laughs> uh, <laughs> me and Nick Jonas have a very a unfortunate history. ship name <laughs> Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm, I said that on the radio once, you didn't did. I? I got a stern word from the BBC after I said that on the radio. Didn't think it through, yeah. Well, I was going to say, you generally keep it fairly clean. You know? yeah. you're, you're, you're quite good boys. Have you ever thought about having like a kind of dark bad side channel at any point? People, people are shocked that I didn't swear in the book. Yeah. It's yes. like a big thing, aren't they? They're like, Dan, I mean, how did you not want to do that? I felt like, you know, it's... I wanted to respect the book. I didn't yeah. want to, you know, and also you probably wouldn't be allowed in a Barnes and Noble. If I you think, kind of yeah, <laughs> Dan does swear a lot, quite a lot on the internet, don't you? When appropriate. Where appro when, when appropriate swearing. Only when incredibly appropriate. And, and what are the appropriate times? Whenever you kind of get, you know, interested enough in something to just get carried away. Because I think, you know, it's, it's such a joy about emphasizing something yeah. with an unnecessary F-bomb. And it's like, I feel like this is coming, bam. There we or go, if you're thunder. scared by a giant mechanical bear, then you yes, just Yes, or if I'm, if I'm falling off a chair, that happens sometimes. <laughs> That's during our spooky gaming channel videos. Only, I'm not crude, though. It's okay. only ever appropriate. I do okay. bleep out crude swear words, as these guys know. Because, you know, there's, just because you're using a word colorfully doesn't mean there's any you know, new reason to be offensive. So, no, 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 you know, no. good, tasteful bleep. Well, no, no, you tend to use it in righteous anger, which is kind yes. of like, yeah, well, you know, when it's, you know, it's like Abs use it as a absolutely. little weapon, you know, yeah. that's the right way to use it. To bludgeon someone with. Yes. Um, we are in the Apple store at the moment. If you could steal any piece of tech from this building, what would you go for? If you could oh, steal wow. anything up your coat and run. Another and charger. You... Where do they go? Yeah. Where do they, they, they go? just disappear. We, use them. We, have, we have like six and I'm like, oh my God. I heard they've like made the next few iPhones already, so I might just go like find the iPhone nine <laughs> underground <laughs> somewhere. Ruffle backstage, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's here somewhere. It's here you somewhere. just have to find it. <laughs> I swear I buy a new phone charger like every two weeks though. It's like sock goblins, which yes. is the thing that I strongly believe in. I literally I have bought because you can go on like websites, you know, like bulk warehouse warehouse websites and just get plain black socks, which is what I buy. Yeah. And I'm like pack of 56 let's where do, do they this go? right now and i've done that twice this year and yet today i was like where are my socks how can you buy over a hundred pairs of pain black socks and not know where any of them are there is no logical explanation yeah. for it but Sock i think goblins. i think i actually might just steal this chair it makes you feel quite important a director's chair i love a director's chair, chair. i think it's yeah. the first time i've ever sat in one i'm like yeah look at me. it's a director's chair i'm Humble. an artist oh yeah <laughs> look at me i could do this and like look at me out put my hand on my knee and stuff <laughs> Dan, do you secretly have any colourful items of clothing whatsoever? <laughs> you, no, have you got like, a yellow t-shirt that you wear on a sunny day mm. that you keep private and hidden? I have one jumper that looks really scary that has some red in it, and I allow that. Because, you know, like, so, red's like blood. It's, like, edgy. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's good. Um, and I have one t-shirt that's actually some MIA merch. Uh, yeah. And I was like, she's really cool, so I'll allow her to be the one splash of colour in my otherwise, you know, funeral aesthetic. I think I on April Fool's Day, we should just get you in full neon, like, <laughs> yeah. head to toe. <laughs> Flashing, yeah. like LEDs under the t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Big white onesie. Yeah. Um, we've got time for one more question, one of which is going to be for me. Um, I want to know what the longest is that you've gone without Wi-Fi or internet. Oh, dear God. The worst thing about being on tour is the lack of, like, Wi-Fi by commitment and I know that's the lamest answer ever but honestly the thing that's given me the most stress is like I get to a hotel and I'm like the Wi-Fi is slow because <laughs> you know when you go somewhere and you can't load a GIF yeah. you just take it for granted you're just like I'm just on websites and they work and then you go somewhere and it's like you, you can load Facebook see pictures but then when you can't load a GIF 
or like a YouTube video, you're like, am I going to have to go down to 144p? <laughs> and it's like, oh my God, they look like a potato. I can't do this. It, it, I had a few I had a few tears. It's it yeah. quite worrying though. I do get the Wi-Fi shakes. If I, if I can't get on, I'll be like, well, well, what's on my Twitter? I you're on, the, I need mo- to you're on the motorway and then suddenly yeah. it, it goes from like 3G to E. Yeah. And you're like, oh no. Oh, what do I do? I think I do need to go full wilderness at some point though and just like sleep in a tent. Rip off the plaster. Avoid yeah. some bears. Yeah. get one with nature I'm sure you could survive the bears Phil that's a great idea so. yes yeah. you definitely come back alive yeah. <laughs> we Thanks, can't Dan. live without the internet <laughs> <laughs> there's absolutely no way no and finally let's look forward to the next year what, are you, what have you got that you can tell us that you're doing next year <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> that was unexpectedly deep and weird was that uncomfortable I'm ooh. very sorry <laughs> that was ASMR wasn't it um, next year what's happening well, we're about to finish our UK tour, which is crazy. Yeah. But obviously, YouTube, the beauty of it is that it's all around the world. So if the reason that we're doing this show is to give, you know, all of the people out there that have seen our videos mm. the opportunity to, like, see us in real life and have, the, like, the live Danifil experience and yeah. just come together as a community, it's very important to us that we take that around the world as much as possible. So what we've been working on right now for a long time is working out where we can go and when. And so, how that can and, happen. And how that can happen. So we definitely want to take our yeah. Dan and Phil show and take it to as many places as we can. I want to go hang out with some kangaroos in Australia. Is that your goal? Given all just think about the kangaroos. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and two months in Australia for some kangaroo bonding. Yeah, yeah that's some good. wombat wrangling. And it, yeah, so that's that's that. More YouTube videos. <laughs> Please don't get arrested, Phil. Okay. Otherwise, the, otherwise you won't be able to go to the other places. Okay, I'll try. All, all the usual Dan and Phil stuff, and then I'm looking no further forward than that. I have no idea what I'm doing with my life. Uh, if you want me to plank face down on the floor, I can do that right now. But yeah. <laughs> go for moment, it, my friend. That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, would you consider releasing a single at any point? Ooh. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> You say you want you say that. <laughs> really? I'm, I'm I mean, saying that was market research right it, there. Not research. Yes. Nothing's off the table. It's just that just because something's on it doesn't mean they're a good idea. I mean, yeah. like we could do the Dan and... There are so many things that just went in my mind then that I won't say out loud. There's lots of bad ideas. There's yeah. lots of just bad ideas. Just say that. We'll stick to the good ones. <laughs> sitcom? Would you do that? TV sitcom? Dan and Phil, yeah, yeah. cheesy sitcom. That'd be, I would. Uh, who would not want to watch that? That'd our life is the sitcom. Our life anyway, is basically a sitcom. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Two guys living in a house that just aren't functional in... Anyway, <laughs> that is our YouTube channels already, I think. Yeah. That's the pitch. That's well, the pitch. that's it. We're out of time. That's the perfect oh. place to leave it. That is the pitch. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. much. It guys. was so fun being in conversation yeah. with you. Yeah. 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 It, makes, it makes it sound so formal. This was a great conversation. Yeah. I listened so happily. It's so lovely oh, to meet you guys. You. Guys, okay. thank you so Thanks much. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you. And thank you guys for coming. Have yeah. a good night. And shout out a typo, even if the argument was right. Destruction. So <laughs> you really, and I make so many typos anyway, so there's no point at all. I think yeah. they know, seriously. My Twitter's just a train wreck, but I try. Can you say now at the age you're at whether you think you've learnt more from your education or from the internet? I think definitely from the internet. From the internet. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, an entire year's worth of school yeah. is just, like, one search term away, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I did post-production at university, so that helped me, like, animate Jennifer Lawrence's face across a screen. And you like actually that. did something relevant. I did something Do you relevant. Know how rare that is, for <laughs> um, yeah. But... Apart from that, I think I learn far more from the internet and just my life experiences as well, like making videos about university or my school life or things that I've done, I think have helped a lot more of my videos than my education. What was that? I'm That's not like, saying a bottle just ball. fall from the sky. There we go, put that there. there I'm go. not saying that my law degree was completely useless, but it has been mostly completely useless <laughs> so far. I'll let you guys know. Yeah. And you've spoken about the dangers of the internet before now and how the internet can become a nasty place. Do you think that we should have someone in charge of the internet? Like a mum or a dad of the internet a who gets the to internet. tell off bad people and go, that was wrong. I think the internet is too powerful to be tamed by anyone. It has yeah. to, you know, it's quite important for the internet to be a completely free and open place there on the internet. But I think that there's a lot of websites that probably don't do enough to protect people from being harassed if they don't want to be just because there's so many things where it's like you block someone and like you can still see them on their timeline and stuff. I don't yeah. think there should be any 
all-powerful force on the internet, but if somebody has like built a community, then they have a responsibility to try and like build all the features as possible for people to completely control how yeah. they're interacted with. Well, you started yeah. the hashtag nicer internet Yeah, the campaign. nicer internet thing we did with Radio 1. Yeah. And that was good. So that was yeah. trying to tell people to be a bit nicer online. Lots of wisdom packed into there. Yeah. I mean, I hear what you're saying, that the internet is too big to be controlled by one or two people, but if you do imagine it being controlled by Sir Ian McKellen, who plays Gandalf, and then Beyonce, suddenly yes, I that be not be quite a good place to be? I think Gandalf be and Beyonce yeah. would definitely yeah. improve the internet yeah. in a big way. And Beyonce's got time. I mean, Beyonce she's already so controls positive. the internet, you know, just with her pop culture influence. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she's out there. So, here we go. Um, uh, so, the book. We're going to speak of the book now. Um, the book. Uh, there's two questions here from Kira. Can, can, we, can we have a hand on a screen? Kira. Do a scream. Or you can do a yo if you're not a screamer. That's good. That was, that was strong good. strong noise. Thank you. I nice. felt the enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. That was dignified. Um, your first question is, uh, what's your favourite page written by the other person? Oof. The hand. I the mean, hand. come on, guys. I mean, we, we've all been there, right? That Was, was yeah. that just one page as well? That, that was two pages. We challenged each other to write fan fictions in our, in our <laughs> yes. own styles. Yes. There are a lot of good ideas <laughs> in the book. And I just thought I'd let my creativity flow as much as possible, so I ended up with a fan fiction about a mutant hand growing out of my chest, um, which... Don't spoil the ending. I won't spoil the there ending. There is a twist. There is a twist ending. coming in, like, the laws of our universe. Yeah. So, yeah, that was really fun to write. That was inspired. Because uh, we didn't, like, tell each other or help each other with the ideas. With that one, we were yeah. kind of, like... We're going to do fan fictions. Yeah. We're not going to talk about it. You just go write yours. I'll just go write mine. And then we'll meet in the middle and just see what the other person made. And I was like, okay, Phil, here's my one about like angsty vampires. <laughs> and then I was like, <laughs> what's yours, Phil? And I was like, okay. I okay. wanted about meeting there at the Brits. You remember who else you bumped into? We saw Ed Sheeran again. Yeah, Ed He's Sheeran nice. again. He's cool. He's a nice person. So if you believe in Ed, good. Yeah. He picked also, a nice guy. RJ Mitty from Breaking Bad was there. That I was, was a like, surprise. Walter Jr. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to give him a big hug. <laughs> and you did anyone... say hello first, otherwise he would have been very scared. Yeah. yeah. And was there anyone there that you would have tried to avoid? Have you got any feuds yet? Is there anyone Not that yet. you have displeased? No, <laughs> no very feuds. Antisocial. Yes. Uh, what was it's... the funny thing that happened? Lily Allen emptied her clutch into your hands, didn't yeah, she? she did. I was, was like, really what's in your yeah, like yeah. a clutch bag? Yeah. Is it oh, right. a clutch? Okay, like it's checking. like a handbag but okay. small. Okay. Yeah. I asked what was in her bag, and she proceeded to empty it into my hands while I was trying to interview her. And I was like, oh, okay. That's so if it was just stood there holding this, like, Chanel bag with, like, a little flask of vodka yeah. and some cigarettes, and we were like, okay. And Phil was like, oh, why are you making me hold things? Yeah. And then yeah. she asked me to repack it, and being the most clumsy person in the world, I was like, I'm going to do this wrong. Real life as a suitcase is something that you should pay to see. So yeah. Your life as a professional packer is not starting now. No, it's not, not at all. So it's safe to say. <laughs> So the format tonight is you are asking the questions. You've all, you've all had forms out there. You, you've done your questions. <laughs> Some of you have asked a lot of questions. Um, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get through them all in time. We're just going to put them out in random order. Okay. And I'm going to get to sample all of your handwriting. So get ready. Um, when, I read out, uh, when I read out your question, I think it would be appropriate for you to scream and put your hand in the air. Uh, <laughs> It's always good to have an excuse for screaming and putting your hands in the air. Yes. So we'll start off with one that's nice in general. Um, what inspires you to make videos? Whose was oh, that? Wow. Hand and a scream? Hand and a scream. Oh. Thank you. Aww. <laughs> Give us your best blood scream. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, oh, no, I don't want to make noise. Uh, wow. um, I get inspired by things in my everyday life that happen to me. Um, which I encounter quite a lot of strange situations, like I got attacked by a, a rabid squirrel. Uh, so there's a video <laughs> that I got attacked made. by a squirrel in the Florida. Um, <laughs> as, you know. I was on BBC Breakfast, and they said, where did the squirrel bite you? And I said, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Can't take that one back if it's No, life. Phil, they meant where on the body. But no, I love getting nibbled on the Florida. It's a yeah. good start of 20 days, isn't it? <laughs> what about you, Dan? <laughs> At first I was like, that's just funny because it makes no sense. Now the more I think about it, I'm like... What does that mean? Appendix. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is this going to get flagged? Can Maybe. things get flagged? Gonna oh, get flagged. It's going to be buried right in the corner of the uh, mm. iTunes store. Um, just videos, what inspires you to make videos? I just kind of like force my opinions upon people. So I'm like, what do I feel like... I want to hear people talking about that I just feel like, you, you want to hear my opinion on this. Um, yeah, that's basically what I do. 
Yeah. And do you study in any way? Do you read all of the newspapers and decide to argue with people? Or do you watch all of the television and go, <laughs> I no, go no, on, no, Yeah, I, I'd go on like 30-hour Wikipedia odysseys before some videos, which is bad. Do you ever do that? Oh, yeah. yeah. You go on Wikipedia yes, and it's like, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? And then it's 4 a.m. Yeah. And you're like, mm, why am I reading about oil rigs? Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> random kind of like, button is dangerous. Because I'm like, I don't want to give an opinion on the internet without being mildly yeah. educated. Because as we all know, the internet will destroy you <laughs> for they anything. Will. You see, like, uh, you made like, you made it like... Let's face it, you're not here for me. I'm not here for me. <laughs> we know who we're here for. This is the bit where I get to be like the voiceover man on X Factor. His name's Peter Dixon, fact fans, because I'm going to wheel out some big facts in a dramatic voice while it's going like this as a visual accompaniment. One started in 2006 at the age of 19, the other in 2009 at the age of 18. It was immediately noticeable they were both weird, funny, and hot. <laughs> when they combined forces, the world essentially exploded. Together, they have 8 million subscribers on one hell of a lot of chemistry and hair. As Radio 1 presenters, they won a solely Golden Headphones Award. They had cameo roles in Disney's Big Hero 6, which is near as you can get to coming to be immortalized by God. Dan has touched Jennifer Lawrence's hand in a bonding high fives moment, whilst Phil has a superior educational qualification and is in the Guinness Book of Records as the fastest coin stacker in the world. Se seemingly uncontent with having conquered the world of internet and broadcast, they have moved like sexy conquering locusts into literature with their debut book, which has been number one both here and in America, in the young adult hardcover list, which sounds rude, but is real and important. The book is The Amazing Book Is Not On Fire, and they are, as you well know, Dan Howell and Phil Nestor, a.k.a. The Amazing Phil and Dan Is Not On Fire. Come join us on the stage. Step one, we didn't trip up the stairs. Yes, yes. Hello, everyone. Yes. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Hi. Thanks Hi. for coming. No worries. Was that brief hiatus there when you were working out what order you should be in? Because yeah, you were, we were talking like, about this have before. an order? Yeah. 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 We met Anton Deck and they said, you need an order, guys. And we were like, what? Why do we need an order? Have you met Anton Deck? Yes. They yeah. are the most aspirational people you'll they ever meet. So they are so organized. They? they knew what they were yeah. doing with their lives. If they, they tell you something, you should do it. That's all I know, so... And did they explain in what order they stand and, and what logic they have chosen that and then how you should choose your that. logic? I think it's just in the ant and deck order with your eyes. So if you see ant The name deck. you say first on the left, I yeah. think that's it. Yeah. 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 yeah that's that's the, the deep theory behind that one. And did you straight away agree with that? You knew yeah. which order you should stand in? We were yeah. just like, okay, uh, we'll do whatever you say. We almost fought to the death. No, let's, let's not lie. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Senpai <laughs> is what you'd call someone you respect <laughs> on the internet. So ant and deck were our senpais. They were. And we listened to them. Yeah. Where did you meet them? Were you at a showbiz party? Uh, we were actually... Uh, well, yeah, because we, we go to parties <laughs> at all. Uh, no, we were at the Brits. We were at the Brit Awards. We were doing some presenting, so we snuck around backstage and we grabbed them for five minutes. Oh, Because he... they were the proper presenters of the Brits, and we were like the weird internet ones at the back of the building, <laughs> so we briefly walked past them and we're like... <laughs> And that was basically it. Yeah. And who else were you most excited about? <laughs> Whoa! I mean, thanks, Phil! You shouldn't lasso your creativity. You should just let it flow out of true, your head. True, true. It was very, very inspirational. Yeah. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone here who's not read the book yet? Would we be spoiling it? Has everyone read yeah, the book? Good, yeah. So Thank you. Know you. What There's lasers this story. pointed at you. <laughs> It is quite the most terrific ending to a story I've ever... <laughs> it's quite <laughs> Graphic imagery. I was actually it? hoping for a movie deal out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> just so you could meet Harry, though. Yeah, I'm just guessing that's why. Sign Harry Styles up. Harry birthed through your own abdomen. He did. <laughs> there we go. Spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I mean, Sorry. there's like, don't lasso your creativity, and then there's whatever that is. That's like, bye, you're out of the atmosphere. Yeah. Well, this question kind of follows on after that one. Were there any ideas that you scrapped... 
or wanted to include but didn't. I mean, I, I'm thinking that you probably included everything you thought I, of, yeah, given I, that that happened. Given but, that that is in the book, I think everything was included that we wanted to be. But we did have about 7,000 pages worth of ideas that we had to, like, whittle down yeah. into our favourite ones. Definitely. We were kind of... We got to a point where we had, like, 30% too many ideas. Yeah. And then we were like, let's fit them all in the book. And then they were like, uh, no, because there's only this many pages. And we went, let's add 80 pages. And they said, you can't just say that. And we're like, okay. So then we had, like, a month yeah. of just, like slowly setting fire to all these ideas we had. I let go slowly, didn't That's I, That's what Phil? they said. They said it was like murdering your pets. Because <laughs> Phil was yeah. like, come on, Dan, just, just pick five. And I was like, I you know what? I'll start slowly. Here's one you can ditch. And they're like, Dan, you need to get rid of 35. And I was like, mm. yeah. Uh, yeah. It took about a month for me to let go of 35 ideas. We did actually end up with a lot more content in the book than we originally planned out to Definitely. do as well. Definitely, it's packed. We got rid of quite a few more photos than words. So there's more words than we expected to have, yeah, yeah. which is nice. And do you feel the split is fair? Are either of you sort of annoyed that the other one got one more page than the other? Or is it completely fair? Did we fair? do that? I, I, think it, I think it's actually Your around 50-50. Your chat turned up a, a few pages. I yeah. think Phil's, like, I think the split of ideas or chat chapters is even but mm. I think that a couple of Phil's things like the chat logs we were like for this to be even it needs to be just two pages but yeah. actually we really want this to take like, like, like more because it's amazing so yeah. I have to keep going <laughs> and who's more likely to be the one that goes no we can't put that in there who's the strict one who's Oof. the who's the no that will not happen <laughs> I'm like the Phil that makes no sense that can't go in the book and <laughs> Phil's like the Dan it won't get printed in America if you say that and I'm yeah. like okay you're probably yeah. right yeah, I think Dan pushes too many limits and I'm like Dan no we can't we can't have that in the book. Maybe not. <laughs> it, it's quite important. We're like two ends of the spectrum yeah. that without the other person meeting halfway in the middle, just it just wouldn't exist. Yeah. Like a beautiful man rainbow. Yes. 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 There you go. yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and picturing things and they're all, they're all good and bad at the same time. Yes. Yeah. The best things are good and bad at the same time. Yes. Uh, next question. A thoughtful question. All right. Okay. What is the general message? Which I thought was what was the general massage, which would have been a the general thing massage. Entirely. What is the general but, massage? But <laughs> what is the general message you're trying to convey through the book? Ooh, I think we were just trying to emulate everything that is the world of Dan and Phil into something. So if the world gets destroyed by a meteor, then that's something that could be left in the rubble, like a memory of our our lives. That is what we were thinking. Yeah, because right? we were just pondering about Dan and Phil and how the whole thing and the YouTube was all a big accident because you know all the people that are YouTubers now it was a complete accident. Nobody yeah. planned anything. Nobody knew that was going to happen. And yet this kind of like amazing world of Dan and Phil kind of did get created. All the experiences that we've had, all the things that we've done over the years, all the videos that we've made, and all of the things yeah. that we've done with the guys that have supported us over the few years. And we were just thinking literally in that kind of a meteor could come and destroy us and this book's left it's like we felt like we needed to do something to kind of preserve Dan and Phil in something forever so that yeah. in the event of a catastrophic meteor or Ian McCullen comes and like just deletes the internet forever Dan and Phil and everything we did and made and you know what these guys were a part of is kind of preserved in a big memory box for us all yeah, yeah. I think I also wanted people to come away and just think don't be afraid of being a little bit weird if you are, just embrace it. Because if, if there's any message that. of Dan and Phil, yeah. that's it. You know what I mean? It's like, you might have no friends or social life or, you know, on any of the, the top 10 things that you think you have to do in school to be cool, if you tick none of those boxes, that's fine. Yeah. There are people out there that will accept you for yeah. just, like, being on a completely different piece of paper. <laughs> the, there is a recurring theme of the apocalypse and doom and the end of the world. Yeah. Yeah. There is. Have you made any preparations for that? Do you have apocalypse cupboards? Have you worked out where you'll go in the event of a nuclear strike? Like, how, how far <laughs> ahead are you thinking? How useful would you be in an apocalypse yeah. scenario? I would, be, I would be terrible. If the zombies started invading, I'd probably be the first person to die. Uh, I've learned that you shouldn't go to a shopping mall because there's too many exits. So Good then the idea. zombies can get in. Yeah. Get in, yeah. all right. So yeah. where would you go then? Where's the safest place? I'd probably just go to the top of a really tall skyscraper. Do you know, like a penthouse, someone's got a pool, they've gone out of town. Steal that, raid their fridge and go swimming. You've got a plan. You're thinking ahead. Yeah, I'm thinking ahead. Yeah. I might I'm have a helicopter on the roof as well. And yet the person who's less, more worried about the apocalypse appears not to have a plan. Yeah, like, I mean, I constantly just think about, like, doom and the inevitability <laughs> of death coming from, like, all angles. So, like, a, a, a constant part of me is always dwelling on different yeah. apocalypse scenarios, I think, but... Um, in the event of something like that, I'll probably just be in my apartment. Yeah. We've got enough microwave popcorn to last for like at least a decade. <laughs> but, but that, that was part of the book. It's called Going Deep. And what we did basically is we just chose the topic and then we talked about it, recorded our conversations, and then we wrote them down in the book, like what we were thinking about robots or the apocalypse. You know, the, yeah. the real, the real the questions. Real, the real that we questions. All need to ponder, yeah. Definitely. 
I'm saying the word legacy here. That's that's the start of the legacy. Yes. That's yeah. the book. That is legacy. Um, and we've got, um, what inspired you to write your life into a book? That's from Gabby. Where's Gabby? Can we have a... We have a hey. Hi, Gabby. Hi. <laughs> that was a good comment. That was good. Thank you. That's good. Yeah. Energised now. That's a double yoker. <laughs> Um, I thought it could help other people out, like talking about my university life and starting a university flat with 10 people and what all the trials of that. I thought anyone that's starting university could read that and think, wow, oh, okay, he got through that in the end. That was great. Um, yeah, it, it was a funny yeah. one because, like, obviously, The Amazing Book is Not on Fire isn't really an autobiography. Like, it's really mainly all the other bits of the book that are just yeah. about kind of like the things that me and Phil have done and created. But then we thought, should we include some parts of it? would it be weird to like do certain bits and certain not bits? Then we thought that, like Phil said, it would be really good to share like certain pockets that different kind of uh, groups of our audience might be able to really relate to different chunks. But then 